Okay, so can you kindly introduce yourself and the topics you're going to discuss today? Yeah, my name is Adrian Blight. I'm from Education Impact in the UK. I'm going to be talking today about uh, emerging technologies in education. Primarily, I'm going to be looking at what are the drivers for change in education and how technology can support that as an enabler towards transformed learning. So we'll be looking at some uh, strategic planning uh, situations. We'll be looking at some actual technology solutions that you can use in schools to transform assessment, transform curriculum, transform teaching and learning approaches in general. Um, it's rooted in the work of people like the OECD and UNESCO and people, uh, think tanks such as Future Lab and uh, the Horizon Report in the, U in the USA. So it's, it's focused on research-based methodologies transforming education by using technology. How do you think the Arab world, like Qatar, is receptive to technology versus the other developed countries? I think very receptive. I think the, um, the Middle East in general, if I can use that phrase to cover the Gulf states as well, I think is, is aware of the process we call leapfrogging, which is looking at what's happened elsewhere, maybe in Western Europe, maybe in uh, um, Asia Pacific region, where countries have tried and perhaps failed with uh, integrating technology and they can leapfrog over those mistakes. And I think there's that awareness of looking around, exploring what's happened in other countries, taking the best bits, ignoring the worst bits, and maybe saving money and time in the long run. Thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, I'm at the conference because I was asked by ICT Qatar if I would present on the KnowledgeNet project, which is a big project in Qatar um, to implement a learning platform eventually with all schools in Qatar. Um, I think the conference is fantastic. Um, we've got a lot of international speakers here, um, so it should be interesting and informative, but it's also really nice that we're showcasing one of Qatar's very exciting projects, which is also, I would say, a leading international project. So, we're looking so what are the key benefits of KNET to, that it would uh, create for people, for uh, school, te school teachers and students, as well as parents? How can it benefit both? Um, so there's different benefits for different groups in the schools. Um, between teachers and students, there are opportunities for more engaging, motivating learning opportunities. Um, and with parents, there's better communication between the school and the home. And parents can get more engaged and involved in their child's learning. Um, and then also as a communication tool, it can help streamline and make communication much more efficient in the schools. Okay, we wish you best of luck and thank you very much. Thanks. My name is Sanjay Sharma. Um, I'm from WSP Genova in the UK. And I'm going to be talking about success stories from the UK in terms of how ICT has been implemented in schools. Um, so that's what I'm going to be covering. So how do you think the Arab world is receptive to ICT versus the more developed countries? Uh, well, I think, I think at the moment here in Qatar, actually, it's kind of moving at a pace uh, that is probably, probably not in existence here in the Middle East. Um, I, think, um, I think what would be interesting is to see, how people's, well, to see what people's perceptions are to the material that I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'd be tempted to say that uh, you're probably a couple of years behind, particularly around developments to do with um, CPD, maybe developments around uh, looking at how you can engage parents into of things like real-time reporting um, and of course in the UK we've got a big building program um, which is unparalleled in the entire world so um, I'd be tempted to say that there's a lot that can be learned from the UK but at the same time the starting points are quite good. So what uh, success stories are you going to speak about? Can you just give us a hint about what yeah, you're going to sure. speak um, I'm going to really try and focus on um, three schools in the UK. One where I was an assistant head teacher for about seven years. Um, I did some research uh, for Bechtel and the secondary national strategies in the UK about, about two years ago. Um, and from that, what we looked at was what makes a school successful with ICT. Um, so essentially what I'm going to be talking about is the journey that we've gone through as schools in the UK and then to try and summarise some of the key points that, that people can take away over here to start to, you know, start to, start to define what, what their journeys might look like. So, so you know, um, I'm talking about some of the best schools in the UK. Thank you very much for your time. So can you please introduce yourself and tell us about the workshop or lecture you're going to give today? Okay, my name is John Dabrow. I come from uh, work in London, North East London. And today I'm going to be talking about how, how we can use the tools that we use uh, in, in the school that I work to help communication and uh, learning experiences for children who've, who are experiencing behaviour difficulties. So they're traditionally children who don't work within the mainstream school and we have to find alternative and uh, sometimes innovative ways of engaging them in the learning process. And really it's about saying that these are just tools, all the tools that we use are just about helping us to communicate more effectively and perhaps doing it in different ways. So putting the IT to, the, to one side but making the communication side of ICT the, the, you know, the focal point. And that's it. 
How do you think the Arab world would be receptive to using ICT for disabled uh, children? Well, I, th I, th I don't see it as, as children being disabled. I see it as saying they're children who, who need a different experience and a different way of doing it. And I think if you, we're, we're all different. Every one of us is different, so we all need an individual approach. And I think if we say that we all need individual approaches, we'll be able to find a way that works for able-bodied or disabled people. Thank you for your time and good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my topic was just-in-time teaching. And what that is, it's a, a strategy that combines web-based assignments with face-to-face -face teaching. Mm -hmm. So as an instructor, you would design a set of learning activities and, or assignments, post them to the web, perhaps through a learning management system, mm -hmm. and the instructor would ask students to respond to the problem or assignment and puzzles. Mm -hmm. The instructor would then read this and based on the feedback students provide, mm -hmm. adjust their teaching yeah. just in time. So this is done fairly soon or prior to class, it could be 24 hours, for example. So in the workshop, I started the workshop with a hook by asking participants to identify how they ascertain students' prior knowledge, because this is one of the ways you can use the JIT to find out what students know before they are introduced to a new topic. I also asked them if they have challenges mm -hmm. in getting their students to complete readings before they come to class. So there was a lot of discussion between the opening questions. Mm -hmm. Then I talked about the actual strategy and provided some examples of how it might be used. Mm -hmm. And actually gave them data, shared data with them from my own studies around how I use just-in-time teaching. Mm -hmm. So I think there were a lot of questions about the process. Uh, there were also a lot of very positive comments um, or I should say it was very positive in the sense that lots of people in the room actually participated, made comments, and posed questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the group, when they finished, had a fairly good understanding of what just-in-time teaching is. Mm -hmm. I also provided an opportunity for them to uh, look at how they might use it in their own teaching context. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the end of the session, participants identified the strengths of the approach and some of the limitations. Mm -hmm. So what are the most interesting comments you received from the participants today? Ooh, I'm not <laughs> um, interesting comments. Um, in terms of the strengths, they talked about it as being a very valuable approach uh, for ascertaining what students already know. Also a very valuable approach for differentiating your teaching when students come to you with different skill levels and understandings of particular topics. Mm -hmm. uh, they also identified it as perhaps an assessment tool. Mm -hmm. And they also recognized, like any approach to teaching and learning, some of its limitations. Mm -hmm. uh, they also commented on the importance of knowing why you're using the strategy, because it can be used for different purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of limitations, they identified time in terms of the instructor's time being able to uh, actually do all the readings and be prepared to modify. Mm -hmm. And also they identified the potential of the approach to provide more contact for outside of class between the instructor and students. So those were some of the sort of summary comments provided. Yeah. At yeah. The how, end. how do you think the Arab world, especially Qatar, is receptive to the idea of integrating technology in schools? How do you think uh, well, teachers are? Well, if I had are? to gauge that by the group that was here, I would say they're, they're very receptive. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of people in the group who were in a post-secondary or higher ed mm -hmm. um, setting, and half the group were from K to 12. Mm -hmm. And I think based on the comments uh, in this group, certainly a very willingness to adopt technology and new approaches and to enhance teaching learning by using technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks.